mighty rushing wind And it's closer now Than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet As Gabriel's songs are called And at the midnight crawl We'll be going home When Jesus steps home On a cloud to call his children The dead in Christ shall rise To meet him in the The word of God in Revelation, the very last words of the whole of the Bible says, Behold, I am coming soon. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. We're living in the end times, everybody. And the alarm, Lindsay, is ringing day after day, moments after moment. This is the hour of the Lord. We are called to go about doing good healing all oppressed of the devil. We, being the body of Christ, God 
in human form, reaching out to the whole world. Whatever we shall bind on earth is bound in the heavenly realm. Whatsoever we shall loose on earth is loosed in the heavenly realm. And we are declaring the victory of Christ Jesus today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lindsay. Praise the Lord. We're here today, yes, in human form, but this human form has been transformed by the enlightenment which God has given us into our spirits. Our bodies being healed, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead should dwell within you, he shall quicken. Does it say May? Not at all. It might be May coming up, the month of May, but I am calling the month of May the month of certainty, the certainty month. This complete certainty of Christ within us, the hope of glory, those joined to the Lord are one spirit, declareth the Lord. We are partakers of his divine nature. Can you say amen today? That is why when we walk in the spirit, there's a joy about us. There's no fear about us at all. Oh, you better stay in because of the virus. I tell you this, the glory of the Lord is upon us to reach out to the whole world. Go ye into the whole world and preach the gospel. But there is a time coming of the beamer seat of Christ. Is that right in the Greek, Lindsay? Yes. The beamer seat of Christ when we shall cast our crowns before him. Hallelujah. What a day that is. The soon coming day. But for those of the judgment, the great white throne judgment, there is a day when there shall be a gnashing of teeth because God, who provided his only begotten son, has been rejected by you on this earth. Not a day in which one would contemplate. So the time is now, brother and sister in Christ, to move out of your comfort seat and move towards the beamer seat. For God shall hold you responsible for not going into the whole world. Oh, but I have this, I have that to do. These are the things of earth that Sunday school we used to sing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Lindsay, how often have we heard the excuses? Yeah. How often have we heard we've got this, we've got that? But this is the time in which we are called to go into the whole world. Now we're talking today of blowing the trumpet in Zion. The word of God also declaring elsewhere from Joel that the Lord roars from Zion. And I hear a roar in the spirit today to have you move out of your armchair, to go into the whole world and preach the gospel and leave aside your excuses. For this is the hour of the Lord. Joel 2, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. What does this mean? Joel was looking to the day of the great apostasy, the day in which there would be a lead up to the dread of God's judgments. And that day is upon the world at this time. People are walking fearlessly all over the world without a saviour, thinking that that which they hear on television is true. But the television does not tell you that there is another sphere. That we as the body of Christ walk the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
ahead of principalities and powers. People say to me, oh, but the devil this, the devil that. I say you, the devil, nothing. He is under the feet of the born again believer. But there has been a great apostasy in the church. An apostasy so great that we see it all around us. That we see dead churches just standing up and singing a draw which is so unbecoming to God. Earlier on in our local church meeting we were watching the US Marines singing that these are the days of Elijah. Doing all of the actions, shouting out hurrah, that this is a day in which they were showing that we are to face these prophets of Baal. Yes, you may say, but the devil, the God of this world, that's what he is. But I tell you, the God, if we look at Matthew 16, has given us, the church, all authority over him. If only we use it. You see, we have people come and say, Oh, I have this problem, I have this problem. I tell you, you're looking in the wrong place. For where we stand, all principality and power and every problem and every difficulty is under our feet. This year, in Sri Lanka has been built a mission house now live streaming 24-7, a media mission house, I believe with five separate YouTube channels in different languages. And we are about to build our studio here in Witton to align with it. And to a Anglican church building in Tanzania at Songia. And the devil is quaking, afraid of this gospel, reaching out to the lost. We achieve our objective of reaching every creature by perfecting the saints for the work of the ministry, which is our commission in Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. We see this as no difficulty. You know, we send an appeal out every month. We'll be doing this for May for thousands and thousands of pounds. And we see it come in. You know, if you join me one moment before we look at this Joel passage, as we start reading and understanding that we as the children of Abraham are heirs according to the promise. And once we stop looking at the bank accounts of this earth and the bank accounts of heaven and start moving in these heavenly places, start seeing the results, start seeing the victory, we then start moving into this place of complete understanding of who we are. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, referring to Abraham. And look what it says in the previous verse. It is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Keep one finger there. Let's find out who the seed of Abraham is. Turning over a few pages. Verse 28 of Galatians 3. Neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, near male or female. You're all one in Christ Jesus. If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now I've seen the will of Abraham. And I've discovered I'm written as a beneficiary of this will. And even though we send appeal out month after month, I read the will before the response and act according to the will rather than the response. Hence, we built this mission house out of nothing. 
How have, you, how have you done that? By not thinking with the natural mind. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So when we read Romans 4, it is of faith, it might be by grace, to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. I see an assurance there to carry on building. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. If ye be Christ, are ye Abraham's seed, and as according to the promise. Oh, what an assurance. We look at the natural and all oh, agreed. But when we start being the manifestation of the word of God, embracing the scriptures and understanding faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We start stepping out in that faith walk, dis disregarding the logic of humanity. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Oh, but I haven't got this, I haven't got... Oh, yes, you, what, 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 what will are you reading? Are you reading the will of man? Are you reading the bank accounts of man? Or are you reading the scriptures of heaven which assures us that we're heirs according to the promise to go into the whole world and preach the gospel, cast out, cast out devils and heal the sick and proclaim the year of the Lord favor. And we are at a time where the church needs to understand its position. I look at the Church of Scotland website, not for long, I prefer the Word of God and find it is more akin to an estate agent than it is to the Scriptures. Church building up the church building, being sold for home renovations. Oh, this is the evil, but the evil is under our feet as we expose that evil and declare the whited sepulchres of the Pharisees who would run the church as an estate agent rather than that of the kingdom of God, preferring to look at the natural world rather than the world which John Knox looks at. There are two sections in this Joel 2 passage prophetically looking towards today. Because there is one section dealing with the former reign and another with the latter reign. The latter being greater than the former. So I am living in days which the prophet Joel was looking forward to. He said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And we live in these Pentecostal moments. We are so full of power. We are so full of resource. We are so full of the anointing of God. That we have to gather the people and tell them. Verse 16. Gather the people. Oh, we're doing this. We are gathering the people. And what are we to tell them? To be sanctified. Separated. In our local church meeting, we heard a teaching by Norman Grubb talking of the sacrifice of C.T. Studd, one of England's greatest cricketers who gave up all his wealth for the gospel to go into the jungles of Africa to live simply and bring Africans to Christ just as my dad did. My dad joined the ministry of C.T. Studd working with Norman Grubb. 
He went to the Bible College of Wales. Not able to pay fees. But he saw the will rather than his own bank account. He saw what God had called him to do, even to the point of joining the queue at Lime Street Station, Liverpool, for the train to Swansea, in the queue for a ticket. In those days, no internet in 1936 or 34, I think it was. You queued up for a train ticket in those days. He had no money. But God had called him. God is the resource. Not his pocketbook, as you call them in America, Wallace as we call them in Britain. He saw the promise. He saw he was an heir according to the promise. He had intercessors battling away in the spirit, namely his sister, Tessie. For this was to be an overcomer which we as the church are called to be every moment of the day. Amen. Along came the tap on the shoulder. Brother, the Lord has called me to give you this. The train fare to Swansea. So as the steam train battled out through the edge hill cutting, he was on the road to Swansea to meet up with Rhys Howells, to be a student at the Bible College of Wales, whose ministry has now been restored in the land of the Covenanters from where it had originally come. He spent two years there Studying, learning the word of God, perhaps longer, I do not know. I was not born then, but let's say two to three years. Then on the 22nd of April, 1936, he was about to leave on a boat to Africa. The world conditions were such that this was looking an impossible trip. Hitler was gaining ground in Germany and he was to go over the seas to a land where he was called to go. Wrote his sister, Dear Bill, thanks for the letter I received this morning. And this will be my last letter to you in those days. No internet, no emails. Communication was difficult. No phone calls. He was going to a far off land. This will be my last letter to London. From where he was to sail. For a few years. It's just fine to know you are rejoicing. It took a lot of my mind. Would you be rejoicing going to a far off land, going over the sea to Africa to preach the gospel and you'd never been abroad before? Said Tessie, I thought you might be a little uh, nervous about leaving, knowing you are not being away from England before. But know this, Bill. And what an intercession this is. And what a realization of our own walk with God. The Holy Trinity will be your traveling companions from now on till we are all called up higher. He has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake me. You see, she'd opened the scriptures rather than the natural circumstances all around her. Yes. Blessed promise. Just think of that day when we offer our trophies to him for he is worthy 
Just imagine yourself standing in the midst of thousands of Africans in heaven. No more bowing down to idols, but to the one who has redeemed them. And you was the signpost pointing the way. I am in tears for those who, like my dad, have been called to signposts who, through natural circumstances, have refused the call. <laughs> Are you prepared to give your all to Jesus Christ today? For this is a time as we start reading in Joel, who was looking to the day when God's judgment would be upon us. He said, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, separate them from this world, yet they give you, those who call themselves Christians, excuse after excuse after excuse. The word says to assemble the elders, we're doing this all over the world, to gather the children. And interestingly enough, those that suck the breasts, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. You see, there is nothing here but full commitment. Then these words, which are so powerful. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare thy people, O Lord. Give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yet the Lord will answer and say unto his people. And here we reach a point in the prophecy which tells of God's commitment. You see, my dad walked out in this commitment rather than what was around him. Declared Tessie in her intercessory letter to him. Oh yes, she said, it will be just glorious. I can see it all clearly, yes, Bill. I rededicate my life again today from now on for prayer for the pulling down of Satan's stronghold. Let the enemy be mighty. We have our trust in a mightier one. We will stand together, although miles apart, and resist them in the name above every name. We are bringing together this resistance movement, Reese Howells founded in the 1920s in the land of the Covenanters. We will not be known as the French resistance, but the Covenanter resistance against the curse of Satan, which is a lie today in the very around this land of Scotland in the very so-called churches around the land of England and in Wales and in Ireland where there is a form of godliness which denies the power and God curses it right at its root as he cursed the fig tree. You see... Without dedication, there will never be God. You see, without the commitment, there will never be God. You see, until we allow the water of the Spirit to flow through our natural minds, 
to cleanse and to sanctify. Look at the word through Joel. To sanctify. To allow the spirit to wash away the thoughts of man and bring us in line with the thoughts of God. Then the promises come. You see, these promises are the antidote against the circumstances. The thoughts of man, as Norman Grubb used to call it, the spirit of error. These are the promises. This is your bank account. This is what we see above anything else. Resist him, declared Tessie. Resisting the devil in the name above every name, Jesus. Lord, master, creator of all things. Now listen to this commitment. I will be constant in prayer. Knowing the enemy of souls is powerful where you are going. She had discerned the African witchcraft even though she had not physically been in Africa but picked it up in the spirit that this was going to be at a level unknown in her own country. We're dealing here with Andrew Pradesh today. Where the enemy of souls has been very powerful. I don't think one Christian ministry there has been successful as it needed to be. There are barriers, there's blockages. Which God is revealing to us at this time. There are warnings. But I'm telling you this. As we... Stay in this time of submission to the Lord. He will raise us up to face the devil and cast him out and set the people free. Just as my dad did. Now look what Tessie then wrote. Knowing the enemy of souls is powerful where you are going. But he will have to give way. Where the name of Jesus Christ is spoken abroad. And if I be lifted up will draw all men unto me. Well Bill. You will be lifted up. To sit with him in the heavenly. What were we, how did we begin this? We walked of this heavenly. We talked of this heavenly place in Christ Jesus. That we being lifted up, Romans 6, buried with him in baptism and being risen up together with him to walk these heavenly places. You had the quickened rope, Paul, to the Ephesians. All the promises of God being that which has already been accomplished, Joel was looking to the day. We live in that day, for we live in the time of the latter rather than the former reign. The latter coming after Pentecost and the resurrection, that we should walk in resurrection power and knock the devil out of every situation, not only in our lives, but but more importantly, from territories, from the areas of the principalities where Satan is sitting on thrones, we are coming after you to cast you out, to set the people free before the great and glorious coming of the Lord to the air. Now look at these promises. Look at them there from verse 19 onwards. Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil. Ye shall be satisfied therewith. I will no more make you a reproach 
among the heathen. In other words, where we've been rejected, we now come with the trumpets of heaven roaring from Zion, declaring that this is the day of the Lord, declaring that all men should come unto him. And I will remove far off from you the northern army. Now that is prophetic. Drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face towards the east sea, hinder part towards the utmost sea, and its stink shall come up, its ill savour shall come up, because it hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice. Joel was in a time of apostasy, as we are in a time of apostasy. But Joel was talking of the days of the former reign. And when we start talking of the latter reign, we're in the period of time Jesus talked about when he talked of the greater things that will follow those who believe. No wonder in verse 23, the declaration of Joel is, Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. He will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain. Your floors shall be full of wheat, your vats overflowing with wine and oil. I will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten. Now how many of you Christians have had years where the locusts have eaten all your resources? You've been brought down to nothing. You have been placed on the rack. You have been as this ministry has been through legal action after legal action well the promise of the Lord is he is to restore the years the locust has broken declared Tessie to my dad if I be lifted up will draw all men unto me are we going to lift up the Lord or our own circumstances and situation oh but I've got family back home they say I've got to be near my grandchildren I've got to be near this well did not God give up his only son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life did not Reese Howes give up his own son Samuel to a safe family so that he could go out to the mission field and preach the gospel and bring a revival in 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 in, the, in, the, in South Africa where revival had not been heard of except from Wales never known of in their own land and Reese Howes taught them the way to full sanctification and revival but it took a price and if God sacrificed his son we must be the children of sacrifice too you see, we have this happy-go-lucky church today where men come forward to have their materials needs met. But Norman Grubb called of a core where men and women can come forward so as to be bruised so that they can bring forth the lost. As Christ paid the price, so we must be prepared to pay the price also. And yes, these promises, restoring the years, the locusts have eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be sacrificed. Praise the Lord. Yes, these promises are yea and amen, but it takes a commitment to be part of of this body that has sacrificed itself to the full so that then we can go forward as the old hymn declares standing on the promises declared Tessie as Moses did to the serpent if I be lifted up will draw all men unto me. Lift him up, Bill, as Moses did to the serpent of the wilderness and the God of Abraham. See this Abraham association here? Yeah. And what was Tessie praying? 
And the God of Abraham will give you boldness to preach recklessly. With abandon. Fearlessly. Oh, we've had to pull down that which has been going on locally here in our own environments in what is known as Kirk. With a people dead to the teeth with boring textual criticism that has its origins in the pit of hell. That's preaching recklessly. Because we're supposed to be nice. Don't remember Christ being nice to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Don't remember God being nice to the Egyptian army for where God sees evil, he pulls it down and calls us in his name to declare the victory of the Lord and pull down the forces of darkness. For our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. The Bible calls us to put on the armor of God, the belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, shoes of the preparation of the gospel of peace, the helmets of salvation, take the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We do this in victory and in power. Then came a prophecy. There may be a furnace of fire like Nebuchadnezzar offered to Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. But oh, this little word it shall not come nigh thee. You see, we hear all this. We see even churches with masks. The only mask I remember in my youth was that of Tonto in the Lone Ranger. The Bible says, let everything have breath, praise the Lord. Not muffled with a mask, but declaring the Lord recklessly. Fearlessly. You say, but what about the virus? I say, what about the healer? You say, what about the lockdown? What about the liberty wherewith Christ has set us free? You see, you have a choice between this world and the logic of this world and the logic of God who gave his only begotten son that not only did he Give his life that we may be in heaven forever. But he gave his life that whilst we're on earth, our mortal bodies be healed. Tessie continues. The enemy's no power over you. Christ was with them. Even their bodies, she wrote, had not the smell of fire on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, when we start moving the anointing, we start to cry, start to get snuffly. And the men use real handkerchiefs, while the women use their tissues. sense the anointing today there's an alarm going in Zion you know you have a choice of the God of the lockdown or the God of heaven Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were locked down in the fiery furnace but Christ joined them You know, I know Christians today who haven't been out for a year. Do not know that Christ is with them. Do not know we're wearing the armor of God of protection and a sword against the enemy. Well, Bill wrote Tessie. God gave the passage to me when I asked for a message for you. Take it, Bill. It was God on the prayer. 
It's a blessing to my own soul to know, though the way may be hot, nothing shall harm the blood-bought ones. Hallelujah. My heart sometimes feels full for the way God has led you out for him. And though we trod a hard road, sometimes the way's been very rough indeed. She wrote this God was waiting for her when even husband and friends forsook her. But it was at that point she wrote. You see, I remember Tessie very well. Fearsome woman. Lindsay would have loved her. Did God pick me up to be a co-worker with himself? You see, you can't be the co-worker if you're walking the world life. Hallelujah, she wrote. Well, Bill, in conclusion, I feel just full up. So much I'm afraid to write more now. I feel really broke. When I think like Paul, to me was this grace given, hallelujah. Now I close asking you to get alone and read the 91st Psalm. God gave me this to pass on to you as I know the Spirit's passing this on to you today. Now please hear me out. It's one thing to hear the promises of God. It's another thing to hear the sacrifice required to move in them. And I read the promise of God that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, none else. My people shall never be ashamed. Then came the promise. Looking ahead to the church era, the era which we are in. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Oh my God, can you not receive this word today? For if you did, you'd act upon it. Not consider your own self, but himself. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall dream, see visions. Also upon the servants, the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. I shall show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. I, I, I can hardly turn the page. Blood and fire and pillar of smoke. Referred to in Acts 2.19. Oh. <clears throat> this is so moving. I've called the Lord so many times over the Kidron Valley from the place in the Mount of Olives where Jesus wept over the old city of Jerusalem, just as he weeps over that which was once church and no longer is. In Israel, the religious system had taken it over from sanctification to 
the ladder of the law that killeth. The Lord bless you, concluded Tessie to my dad. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Amen. Yours, united to him, to whom be glory forever, Tess. And there was a postscript. Raise ye the cross, where now nations to idols bow. What a conclusion. What a message. Raise ye the cross, where nations to idols bow. And Joel concludes this chapter two. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. It shall come to pass. With this I conclude. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord have said. And significantly we read, not in the majority, but in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Lindsay's coming to sing the story of Jesus. We are living in the last days and there is a call to the front right now to come and join mm. us at Whitton, to come and join us in reaching out to the whole world, an act of faith which is not our faith but his faith. Lindsay, come and sing this glorious hymn. Thank you, David. That's a solemn message, but a wonderful message. That is the depth of sacrifice and the depth of worship and praise that God requires of us. And he requires us, as he always has, to preach the gospel to every creature and to tell the story of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tell me the story of Jesus. Yes. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Praise you, Lord. And never ever underestimate the role of the intercessor, by the way. Amen. Who speaks the words of the Lord as David's auntie Tessie did to his, her little brother. He was on his way to Africa. Tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every. Mm-hmm.
the cross where they nailed him writhing in anguish and pain pain tale of the grave where As he has never changed. Yesterday, today, forever. Jesus is the same. All may change. But Jesus never. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Lindsay, we're living in what is known as the last days. And we're being called to reach out like never before. You know, the time is so short. You sung at the beginning of the program. The midnight cry and the signs all around us. And that midnight cry is upon now. And the Lord is seeking your life that you should come unto Him. Oh, and there's a sacrifice involved. You see, the choosing of the narrow road above the wide one is one where will, you will be rejected by your home, your family, friends. But this is a walk that bears no relationship to human understanding. It's a walk of victory and we stand with the determination God has given us. And that determination is a result of Christ within us, the hope of glory. And the determination is of never giving up, 
not understanding defeat, but walking in constant victory, even during times which we call in the Christian world, the valley experience. You know, the psalmist wrote, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, for I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And when you give your life up to Jesus, it is a life which is redeemed. Our understanding becomes enlightened over who we are. We grasp the fact that we are as He is, 1 John 4, 17, in this earth. We grasp the fact that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost, the container of God, that as we reach out to the lost, we reach out with no fear, knowing that within us is the Creator, and that God has called us to lay hands on the sick that they shall recover. God has called us to deliver those who are bound, to set free the captive, to go out into the whole world and preach the gospel and declare that this is the year of the Lord's favor. You know, some have given up, Lindsay, and they've seen the road too hard because they've looked at their natural selves and their natural understanding. But when we understand that we have been quickened together with Him to walk the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, just as we witnessed in the intercessory letter of Tessie, that strongholds bow down to us, that wherever we walk, the Holy Trinity be our traveling companions, that whatever we say, the Bible declaring that whatsoever we shall bind on earth is bound in the heavenly realm. And that whatsoever we shall loose on earth is loosed in the heavenly realm. And this is a place of complete victory. But there are times when we have stronghold after stronghold, looking as if they have their hold over us. They play with our emotions and play with our feelings and look to convince us through our minds that we are defeated. But we say to them today, the greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. And from our spirits declare the victory of Calvary 2,000 years ago. We heard earlier in our local meeting, who is on the Lord's side? who will serve the King. We are declaring we are on His side, the victory side. But the Bible declares that 2,000 years ago, He made an open show of principalities and powers. You know, Lindsay, these are special days. These are anointed days. And the call to the lost is on, but the laborers to the harvest are few. We invite you to become a laborer today, a co-worker, as Tessie pointed out, with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Will you join us here today? Give your lives unto him and we shall reach every creature with the gospel. You know, We have a lovely lady called Pamela Massey, who now, I think about six weeks ago, I never remember time, for however long it is, came to join us, giving up her job, giving up her so-called life security to come and give her life for the gospel. And you know, Lindsay, she's been such a blessing to us. She has. And you know when we bring her on and talk about the things of God it's a sheer joy to see what God has done through her she's been through times like we've been through times when all seems to have been lost 
but he never leaves us in those days. And as Pam comes up and shares with us, we thank you for joining us. And Pam, I know, is a word today through that lovely heart of hers. And the Lord will reveal it. And we thank you. Lindsay, please Here she is. Her, give her the mic. Let's see the both of you on the screen. There we are. Go forward. That's it. Share with us. Morning. Or should I say afternoon? Um, well, I mean, I've been here for just, well, getting on for six months now. And it was a very hard decision about coming here because some of my lovely friends who I have, where I was before, didn't fully understand why I was coming here, giving up my home, my job, my daily like security. But I felt, well, I won't say felt, I know that God asked me to come here and I have no regrets about coming here because, like, like David said, the harvest is so hot, the reapers are very few and as you can notice here, come and join the reapers, all the kingdom seekers laying down their lives to find us in the end and that is everything um, I've come here so I have no regrets about coming here it's not, not going to be easy but I know I, I mean I've learned so much I mean I'll admit that before I came here I used to see God and myself as separate and I've come here and I'm doing my studies listening to the um, recordings from we heard uh, Norman Grubb this morning. The last few weeks we've listened to um, what's his name, Maynard James, and they speak of Jesus. Of, I mean, we, we read the Bible, and it says in there that Jesus dwells in us, that we're the temple. But I think somehow before I used to detach it. I don't know why I did that because it clearly says that Jesus is living in us so in that and we are he's in us we're in him just as God is in, was in, is in Jesus and Jesus is in God so we are as Jesus is on this earth we are his hands his feet and mostly his voice and he wanted us at, and wants us still to go out there throughout the world and tell of his good news through what he did for us you know through the work of the cross that he did for us but he he rose from there from the from death so he's given us that victory so we shouldn't be afraid of anything because if we're with god and he's definitely with us oh, what's that um i'm just trying to that's it. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, if God is for us, who can be against us? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Um, so, I know it's not an easy decision to make. It's about coming here, leaving everything and coming here. But I know deep down inside it's going to be very worthwhile helping to bring more and more people to Christ. Because we are in the last days there's not much time left that's one of the reasons why I decided to come now I've I'd given 25 to 30 years of my life to, to doing podiatry in the NHS but I felt this is the right time now knowing and seeing what's going on in the world and I'm sure that there are people out there maybe you who's watching now who see what's going on in the world about you know with, with you know the virus and global warming and this that and the other and you can see things things are happening and you can probably sense those things are happening and that's probably God who's going on your heart and although it can be quite frightening to listen to that to begin with please do listen to that um, that pulling on your heartstrings because that's probably God asking you to come to come and join us here to learn the word, to study the word and then, I mean I'm studying but I'm also helping to, to minister in a way as well and you know, to, to bring you know, to tell of God to other, to other people so if you, if you are 
having your heartstrings pulled by Jesus, then please don't ignore it because we need you. And we really look forward to you coming here and joining us in doing God's work. And what, you know, it gives so much pleasure and so much joy to do what God wants us to do and to be obedient to him. And as I know it's not easy always being obedient but we, we have to remember we have him in us and he will help us to overcome anything we just have to believe in him and be strong in him so if you're feeling that or if you have your heartstrings pulsing go to Whitharm study and be a person who brings other people to Jesus and then please contact us. We've got all the, the address and phone numbers and things on the screen. I'm, I'm really glad I'm here. And I know that you will be if you come as well. Thank you so much, Pamela. And we're so glad you are here. And thank you for these lovely words. You can hear she's a lovely heart. Those words are straight from the heart. And from the heart of God calling you. Who are listening. And not just listening to us, but listening to him, which is much more important. Amen and amen. These are exciting times we're living in. Challenging, yes. But, you know, as Norman Grubb said this morning, you exercise your faith and then faith becomes a reality. And the promises of God never fail. Bye for now. And God bless you. Bye.
the dream.